Good morning. My name is Joe Vite, and I'm a member of Eden's Mission and Outreach Hub. I am committed to try to help make right relations with our Indigenous peoples. We begin today's service by acknowledging that we are gathering on land that has been the territory of the Huron-Wendat and Patoon First Nations, the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and the Ojibwa Chippewa peoples, and currently the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. We give humble and heartfelt thanks to the Indigenous peoples for their stewardship of the land on which we now live, work, play, and worship. Though we cannot change the past, we must work diligently and lovingly to try and reshape the present and the future for our Indigenous peoples. There are 207 reserves in Ontario, held by 123 First Nations. In 2019, there were 218,451 registered Indians living in Ontario, 44% of whom lived on reserves. Note, the term registered Indian is a legal term under the Indian Act. Reserves in Ontario were held by Anishinaabe, Cree, OG Cree, Haudenosaunee, Delaware, Delaware, and Algonquin peoples. There are also a handful of First Nations in Ontario who, for a variety of reasons, do not have reserve land. Today we would like to reflect upon call to action number 12 from the Truth and Reconciliation Report. We call upon the federal, provincial, territorial, and Aboriginal governments to develop culturally appropriate early childhood education programs for Aboriginal families. And now I'd like to make an announcement about a very significant upcoming event, which is going to be held on June 11th, sunny Saturday, June 11th, is the 312th annual Eden Golf Tournament, started by Brian McLean when he was a little boy. And this golf tournament, I want to spend a couple minutes to tell you a little bit about it. It's a golf tournament of friendship. It's not the PGA or the Masters or anything like that. You don't have to be a great golfer. In fact, it really doesn't matter. It's going to be held at a beautiful little golf, co golf course called Derrydale, which is over on Derry Road and just west of Highway 10. It's 12 holes, so as opposed to being 18 holes at a normal golf course, this one's only 12, 12 beautiful sunny holes. And you're going to be put in a team. You can come as an individual, two or three or four, and you get put together and it's called a scramble. It's not an egg, you're not scrambled eggs, you're gonna be scrambled together, and that means that everybody hits the ball when you start off at the tee. You hit the ball, one goes 50 yards, one goes 150, one goes 200, doesn't really matter then everybody goes, picks up their ball, and they go to where the best ball is. So it's called best ball or scramble. And that's how you play, and you have one score. So if you get a six, that's the score for the whole team. And the score is really not important, because after this beautiful round of golf, should you choose to golf, then we're coming back to this beautiful building. And there's going to be a gorgeous little chicken dinner provided by our friends at Sobeys, the tiny little marketer from across the country. They're going to be cooking the turkey, prepared, and, and, and not the turkey, sorry, the chicken. You're going to have a gorgeous chicken dinner in this building, spread out, high, high ceilings, doors open for fresh air, so all will be good. And then there'll be a silent auction. During this, you can look. And a silent auction, if you wonder what that is, that, yeah, I'll be quiet. People will be quiet. It's silent. You look around at items, and you have a chance to bid on it. If there's something that's beautiful that you see and you would like to bid, and, and meaning bid, write your name on and, and some money, then that money collected will help come back to this church, and it's, it's a bit of a fundraiser to help pay for the lights. So June 11th, you can do one of three things. You can golf, come back for the chicken dinner and the silent auction, or you can, and the golf starts at one o'clock on Saturday, the, silent, the, the dinner starts at six, and the silent auction is ongoing. So you can just come for the golf, you can come for the golf and the dinner. You can just come for the dinner. But please come. Think about it. Bring a friend. Bring a few friends. There's still a few openings. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Burden. And on behalf of Eden's affirming team, I would like to let you know that on June 12th, we will be having a pride service. We invite you to dress casually and colorfully for this service as we reflect on God's colorful and diverse creation. There will also be cookies and juice outside after the service. 
So don't forget, wear rainbow colors on June 12th. Good morning, my name is Susan Roberts and I'm the chair of the council. And I am here to remind you about our AGM that's happening uh, next Sunday. That's AGM part two, the life and work of the church and it will take place both in person as well as on Zoom starting at 11.30. And the primary purpose for the meeting will be to elect new members to council to, for you to affirm the resignation of a trustee and to elect a new trustee. So I really encourage you and uh, I hope to see you next Sunday, May 29th for our AGM part two. Thank you to Bev and Catherine and Terry Hill for their leadership and worship last weekend when I was away. Good morning. Happy Victoria Day weekend. Today, our service acknowledges Asian Heritage Month. Welcome to worship at Eden United Church in Mississauga, Ontario on this, the sixth Sunday of the season of Easter, May the 22nd. 2022. I am Reverend Jan McCormick. I am the Supply Minister here at Eden United Church. Welcome to everyone from near and far who are joining us virtually for worship this day. And welcome to all of you who are at your cottages. According to the view count on YouTube, over a hundred people are watching our services on Sundays. And so we'd like to get to know you a little bit. If you feel comfortable, please uh, go into the chat and uh, just let us know where you are joining from and a little bit about yourselves. <laughs> Welcome to everyone here in the sanctuary. It is a pleasure and a privilege to worship together. The term Asian refers to people whose ancestry originates in the Far East, Southeast Asia, or the Indian subcontinent. This includes countries such as Cambodia, China, India, Japan, Korea, Malaysia, Pakistan, the Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam, Laos, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and many others. Just as we would not expect that all Canadians would be alike, we cannot expect that all Asians would be alike either. There are some similarities between Asian cultures, but there are also differences. <coughs> some of the similarities include respect for elders, close-knit families, and multi-generational households. In the scripture passage from 1 Kings, a widow shares her meager meal with Elijah. And in the gospel story, the risen Jesus is revealed to his companions as he breaks bread at the table. The common theme is human hospitality and also the generous, reliable provision from God. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we light the Christ candle. Each new day reminds us of the light that dwells within us, the light that God has placed deep within our hearts. We light the Christ candle remembering that we are made in light and love, remembering that we are called to bring light and love to others and to the world. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. 
Let us join our voices in the call to worship. We have come from different places to worship God. We have brought our own cultural heritages. We have gathered to seek God's concern. We have come together to be peacemakers and community builders. We open ourselves to God's wisdom. We open ourselves to the Holy Spirit. Come, let us celebrate God's presence among us. Come, let us worship God. We continue with the opening prayer. Let us pray together. God of life, you sustain us through the harmonious work of heaven, earth, and human beings. You enrich community woven by different cultures and traditions. Today, we join together to celebrate Asian Heritage Month in remembering who we are. Grant us visions of your new creation and draw us together to work in harmony. Enhance our joy in journeying together for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, our companion, we pray, amen. Psalm 67 talks about people praising God, but what does that mean? Praise is the expression of approval or admiration for someone or something. Some people think there is only one way to praise God, but there are really lots of ways. Everyone needs to find a way that works best for them. Some people choose to praise God in prayer Others prefer to use song or music as their methods of praise. Some choose to read and reflect on passages from the Bible. And others might choose art or dance. There are even more ways to praise God. Please join with me in prayer. Praise God the sun. Praise God for every season of the soul. Praise God for all the nations. Praise God, all creation. Praise God with electric guitars. 
Praise God with loud drums. Praise God with hip hop. Praise God with rhythms that don't stop. Praise God with the hallelujah chorus. Praise God with a country song. Praise God with dancing steps. Praise God for all the music. Lift up your hymns of praise. Praise God. Amen. Prayer for illumination. Let us pray. O oh God, as we open your holy book of words written long ago, open our hearts and minds to receive your word for us today. In the reading of the scripture, may your word be heard. In the meditations of our hearts, may your word be known. In the faithfulness of our lives, may your word be shown. Amen. Hebrew Testament reading. 1 Kings, chapter 17, verses 8 to 16, New Revised Standard Version. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there, for I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterward, make something for yourself and your son. <coughs> for thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of meal will not be emptied and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she, as well as he and her household, ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. The Gospel reading is from Luke chapter 24, verses 25 to 35. New Revised Standard Version. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road? while he was opening the scriptures to us. That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. God's word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Herein is wisdom. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us pray together. Loving God, I pray that if there are words that are not in my text, that you will put them in my mouth. And if there are words that are not in my mouth, but people need to hear, that you will put them in their hearts. Amen. The widow of Zarephath labored under a death sentence. In Elijah's time, just as today, when disaster struck, the most vulnerable were those most greatly affected. A widow and her son had no means of support in Elijah's world. Perhaps they could grow a few crops and sell some produce in order to afford staples such as oil and flour. But that was no longer possible in a drought. The widow was gathering some sticks to create a cooking fire upon which she planned to bake her own last supper when she encountered Elijah. Elijah asked her to bring him water and food. Well, actually, he didn't really ask her. He more or less demanded it. There are, in my opinion, a number of incredible aspects to this story. Elijah had been hiding in the Wadi Cherith when God instructed him to go to Zarephath. Now, the Wadi Cherith was on the east side of the Jordan River a little bit over halfway between the Dead Sea and the Sea of Galilee. God sent Elijah to Zarephath, which was in Phoenicia, on the opposite side of the country, 
on the Mediterranean coast and quite far to the north. It was a long way for Elijah to travel to find a widow who God had instructed to feed him. Why couldn't someone closer by give Elijah food? Why did God arrange for a Gentile woman, a foreigner, to feed Elijah? Why did God arrange for a person who was destitute, a person who had nothing to give, to be the one who provided? And why did the woman acquiesce? Why didn't she argue or refuse to share? What would you do if you were asked to share the last bit of food in your cupboard with a stranger? A stranger of a different nationality, culture, and religion. This is not a story about Elijah, nor is it a story about the widow. This is a story about God. God is the provider. God specializes in providing food, both food for our bodies and food for our soul, both of which sustain our life. The oil did not run out. The jar of meal was never empty. Death was swallowed up by promise. Death was swallowed up in hope. God provides for everyone everywhere. Saving the life of a Phoenician woman illustrated God's care for the entire world. This story also demonstrates that our God is a God of communication. God initiated the dialogue with Elijah. God is also a God of instruction. Elijah was called to action. Arise, go to Zarephath, and when you get there, stay. Finally, this story illustrates that God is a God of promise. I have instructed a widow there to provide. Give us this day our daily bread. Did you notice the similarities between this story and the story from the Gospel of Luke? The familiar story of the encounter with Jesus on the road to Emmaus is also a story of people on the move. There are at least nine verbs describing movement in that passage. They were going. He walked ahead. He was going on. Stay with us. He took bread, blessed, broke, gave. Eyes were opened, recognized, vanished, they got up, returned. The risen Jesus and his followers were on the move, but it was not purposeless movement. This is a story of hospitality, of fellowship, and of community. It is a story of revelation through the sharing of a meal. The description of Jesus breaking bread and sharing it at the table is almost identical to the description of the Last Supper, which is the origin of our sacred meal, what we Christians refer to as communion or the Eucharist. Now, you are probably wondering, what does this have to do with Asian Heritage Month? Perhaps you will remember that one of the speakers in last week's Minute for Mission mentioned two important Asian cultural values, harmony and connection. 
In his service for Asian Heritage Month, which was written in 2019, the Reverend Dr. Hayuk Cho wrote of the sacredness of food in Asian culture, and particularly of rice as a sacred food. As much as rice is a symbol of harmony, it is also a symbol of difference. There are many different varieties of rice, 120,000, in fact. Rice is categorized by the size of the kernel, its starch content, the flavor, the color, as well as the length of the grain. There's long grain rice, medium grain rice, short grain rice. Varieties include jasmine, basmati, arboreo, red aromatic, black jasmine, sweet rice, and of course, the rice which is native to North America, wild rice. The numerous varieties of rice are similar to the numerous nationalities and cultures of humanity. Rice is the staple food that feeds more than three billion people in the world. Before Hinduism or Buddhism or Christianity, the predominant religions of Southeast Asia revolved around rice, ecology, and the environment. Throughout Asia, rice is still considered sacred. In some cultures, rice is associated with women and fertility. In Indonesia and the Philippines, senior skilled women with using delicate knives carefully select the seed rice for the next crop. Many Southeast Asian cultures believe a female rice deity known as the Rice Mother. The Rice Mother inhabits the rice fields protecting the harvest and nurturing the seed rice. The rice field is a unique ecosystem. After the rice is harvested, the field is full of fish and frogs and eels. Ducks come along after the harvest and eat the gleanings and lay their eggs. There is an ongoing cycle of birth and rebirth in a rice field. In a, his message of 2019, Reverend Dr. Hayuk Cho wrote, quote, In Korea, the typical morning greeting is, have you had breakfast? Later in the day, the greeting changes to, have you eaten? This greeting is not unlike, hello, or how are you, in North America. If the answer is no, then inevitably food would be served. He described his childhood experience. I could have my meals at many different people's homes, not because my parents did not feed me, but because we considered our neighbors family. Children in a village were fed by all and any of the villagers. The villagers raised all the children together. In Asian people's holistic thinking of life, it is interconnected or interdependent, and rice is symbolic. Heaven, earth, and human beings have to work together to produce a bowl of rice. A bowl of rice on our table is the collective work of heaven's sunshine and rain Mother Earth's nurturing embrace, and human labor. For East Asian people, rice is also an embodiment of peace. Rice is meant to be shared together. For Asian people, sharing meals has been a common ritual. In our sharing of meals together, there is peace. In our sharing of meals together, there is community. Whether a communal or an individual 
ritual, eating rice is a sacred act. So the greeting, have you eaten, is a helpful reminder that people are checking up on each other's well-being. We are not alone. We are all connected. Heaven, earth, and other human beings in a sacred act. He concluded his message with a poem written by Korean poet Kim Ji-ha, which is titled, Rice is Heaven. Rice is heaven because heaven cannot be possessed by one. Rice must be shared with each other. Rice is heaven, just as together we view the stars in heaven, rice must be shared by all. When rice is eaten, heaven enters the body. Rice is heaven. Ah, rice must be shared." End quote. This poem reminded me of a lesson I learned some years ago. I was working in physiotherapy in what was then known as home care. Entering people's homes to provide care can be a bit risky. We had attended a security training workshop facilitated by a police officer, and we were told that when entering a client's home, we should always keep our shoes on. In the event of a situation arising which meant that we had to exit the home rapidly, there would not be time to put on one's shoes. We were also instructed to never accept food or drinks in a home, as we could become ill due to unclean circumstances, or more dramatically, we could be poisoned or drugged. One day, I entered the home of an Asian family to provide physiotherapy to a man who had been injured in an accident. Neither he nor his wife spoke English. The woman indicated to me that I should remove my shoes and don a pair of beautifully embroidered slippers. I shook my head, no. She looked puzzled and a little sad. She left the room and returned with a tray of food, which looked and smelled delicious. On the tray was a large bowl of rice and a variety of other dishes. Again, I shook my head. No, thank you. I set about doing my assessment of the man's issues as best I could without language, and I prepared to leave. I noticed a photograph of a young girl on the table. I guessed that she was perhaps 10 or 11 years old, and it looked like it was probably a school photograph. So I pointed to the photograph and I asked, English? The woman nodded. So I wrote a note asking this young girl to phone me so that I could arrange the next visit at a time when she would be at home and able to be an interpreter for me. She called that evening and we arranged the next visit. And then she told me that I had upset her mother very much on my visit that day. She explained that in her culture, removal of one's shoes and donning the slippers provided was a gesture of respect and friendship. Accepting the food offered was a gesture of peace hospitality, and con connection. By refusing to accept either, I had shown myself to be disrespectful and untrustworthy. If I intended to work with her father successfully, she said, I needed to put on the slippers and eat the food I was served. The directness of this young child impressed me greatly, and I was embarrassed by my own self-absorbed attitude. On my next visit, I donned the slippers, and I enjoyed the delicious food offered. And as I did so, tears rolled down my hostess's face. 
rice is heaven. Amen. Your financial gifts enable the various ministries and projects of Eden United Church to continue and to carry out the church's mission to gather, grow, and go. We are very grateful for all donations. It is possible to give in a variety of ways. You could deliver a check to the secure box outside the church office or you could contribute through PAR or by e-transfer. Or, if none of those will work for you, you could mail a check to Eden United Church. You will find the correct mailing address on the church website. For those of you who are joining us in the sanctuary for worship, please place your offering envelopes in the offering plates at the back of the sanctuary as you come in to worship. Thank you to everyone who continues to regularly contribute to the support of the mission and programs of Eden. Every heart that beats, every hand that moves, every life that is lived with gratitude and joy illustrates the gifts that we have been given by God. With thankful hearts, we share our resources. With humble spirits, we offer ourselves. Let us present our offering to God this day.
Let us join our voices in the offering prayer. Let us pray. To continue to bless our lives, wherever we find ourselves, the bounty of your presence meets us there. We bring these gifts to you in order to share our bounty. May those who need these gifts find your presence, even as they receive what they need. May their paths of faith be lit by your light. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We continue in prayer as, as we pray for ourselves and one another. Let us pray the pastoral prayer together. God of life and love, as we mark Asian Heritage Month, we pray for all those among us who consider themselves to be Asian Canadians. We pray for peace among Asian nations. We recognize the gifts of harmony and connection which people of Asian heritage share with others. We also acknowledge the importance of Asian culture, uh, sorry, the importance Asian culture attaches to the sharing of food. The widow of Zarephath shared her last meager meal with a stranger, a person of a different culture and a different religion. Help us, O oh God, to be that generous. Lord, we pray for those whom we know and those whom we do not know who are in need of your healing touch. We pray for those whose lives are burdened by loss or heartache, for those who are struggling with illness or pain, all those who carry hidden sorrows. We pray that you will grant strength and healing. Lord, we pray for all members of the Eden community, our families, friends, neighbors, and co-workers. We pray in particular for everyone named on the list of requests for prayers that has been circulated. As a church, we are called to pray for each other and for our mission in the world. With the Regional Council Prayer Cycle, we pray for the ministry and mission of the Chapel of the Delaware in Six Nations. Lord, we pray this morning for people injured in yesterday's storms and for the families of four people who died. We pray also for everyone coping with property damage from the storm. As we consider call to action number 12 from the Truth and Reconciliation Report, we pray that all levels of government will work together to plan and initiate culturally appropriate early childhood education programs for Aboriginal children across the country. We bring these prayers to you along with prayers which remain unspoken. We pray in silence for those concerns which weigh heavy on our heart this day. Trusting that you have received all our prayers, both spoken and unspoken, with mercy and grace, we pray in the name of the Christ within us and among us, who taught his followers to pray this way.
You have a part in the commissioning today. Please join me. We are different, but we are connected as a family of God. We go with God who calls us to love and serve others. We are called to build our community. We go with God who calls us to seek justice and resist evil. We go into the world with respect in creation. We go into God's world to share what we have. We go into God's world to share who we are. We go into God's world with God's love, Christ's peace, and the Holy Spirit's song. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with kindness and bring you peace. And all God's people said together, Amen. Amen.